naked analysis of the euro dollar. Hi, it's Charlie giving you this week's uh, midweek video. And so what I've done is I've taken everything off of this chart and I'm starting here with a daily time frame. So what I'm going to do is just you can see we've got some lines on my chart here and we're just going to zoom out bit by bit so we can see where these lines marry up and then see what sort of analysis we can we can come up with here. So yes, on the daily chart, we can see that we've got this horizontal line down here and we've got a horizontal line up here and some diagonal lines. So we have we can't see enough information here. So what we're actually going to do is going to go out to the weekly chart and see what else we can see. So we can see this horizontal line here um, just above where we currently are now links back to these uh, this cluster of activity here there might be something else which we still can't see yet off screen and likewise with that upper horizontal line over here that we still can't see off screen we're going to go back a little bit further in a minute um, we can what we can see is we've got this nice um, uh, channel here uh, that's in play um, for the euro so although the euros obviously come out of that and broken that uh, just uh, the end of last week and into this week I'm recording this by the way on Monday so I'm recording this video a little bit early so I don't know where this price is going to be by the time this comes out to you because this may, video may not go out until Tuesday afternoon Tuesday evening something like that um, so although we've broken this channel I, I I don't take that as absolute concrete evidence just because you do a uh, price cut breaks a channel line or, or a key moving average it has to properly break it for me to um, sort of acknowledge that so it doesn't necessarily mean um, uh, that's over for, as far as I'm concerned is, um, I'll show you some evidence uh, another example of that in a moment so at the moment yep we've got this channel and that to me is still in play this channel now don't get me wrong last week was obviously quite a sell-off and we've got all the fundamental arguments and yada 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 I'm just looking at the technicals here at the moment so let's now go out to see what this line is down here so let's go out to the monthly time frame and on the monthlies we can now see a little bit more about these horizontals more so that horizontal i said about linking up to this this what when we were looking at the daily charts this is what we could see but in fact you can see that it really this was i've had this horizontal line on my chart since back in 2000 going back to this 2010 low so i don't think it well, yeah, it actually comes all the way further than there, but I, I put it on my chart after that. So that this horizontal line that we're around, well, we're at at the moment, is quite a significant level, but we've been trading around it. As you can see, we came up to it uh, last year. We then pulled back, then we broke through it um, before then obviously now pulling back. So it's, it's, a, <clears throat> it's an important level. Likewise, with this... Um, area up here around about 123 to 123.50 this horizontal line here why is it not at these highs um, up here well we have to see go back further so if we go back further you can see that what I actually did with this one is I had this one on from this low here um, 2008 and it cr crossed all through these other lows so yes price spiked through it and I've put that line in down here but I've still always maintained this horizontal um, uh, support line or, or line should you say it's not always a support it could be resistance as well if price comes back up to it so that's nice it marries up with all of these clusters of activity I don't know what else was there in the past no without me going too far back so you can see that the, both of these horizontal lines are actually quite significant okay and of course we could put more on the charts further down if price is going to come down further we could put more more on but certainly that's that's significant now look at this trend line down here you, you just heard what I said about that uh, trend line on the weekly chart now look at this one here on the monthly and you can see what I mean about how price can break a trend line but actually still hold it and then still end up coming up and that's what's happened here as well so that happens quite commonly so coming back to that weekly chart it's not the end of the world that oh price is broken and think I think a lot of people as soon as they see price close below something yes it's it might be a a forewarning of a pending more downside and a proper breakdown there um, but it's not always so I there has to be other stuff going on on my charts for me to say right yes that's a confirmed break of this trend line and so therefore we're going to go lower so um, anyway let's go back out to the monthly chart so we we can now see what 
both of these horizontal lines are about. So where we're at at the moment is really, really significant. Now, it doesn't mean that just because we break this this um, the uh, the weekly channel that we've got there that that channel that I just went showed you on the weekly we could we could still break that a little bit more but do we generally hold on to this support line this is much more key to me this this uh, horizontal line than that uh, than that channel uh, the channel's important, yeah, uh, on the weekly chart, but that could just disappear. And um, but this horizontal one goes back years, as I've shown. So this one is much more important. So now price could bounce around down here and still probe, maybe come down to 118. Um, and of course, we've got these lows down at 117 or so from um, just uh, March of this year. So um, we could want to go down for those. But do we generally hold it? Even if we went down towards 117, if we bounce back up again, that would still be holding. So this horizontal line is going to be key on your charts because either we're going to get a proper break and we get down to 117 and then we might get a small bounce there and then we come all the way down for this long term trend channel line. Or we're gonna obviously, or we're gonna hold. So you have to make your own mind up as to how you you interpret this information. Trading is a is a personal thing. I think people that that are looking for um, answers from from others, it's sort of fine. That's what I do when I'm do, trading myself, and I might and I do regular commentary for our uh, for our members. But uh, as far as you know, where I'm looking at the markets and what side of the market I'm looking to be on. But for the YouTube uh, videos here, it's not necessarily my job to give you that. What my job is to, is to get you to think about various aspects and have a look at these sorts of charts and then make your own decision as to where you think the markets might go. So um, certainly this is an important level. Now let's come out to the quarterly chart. OK, so now we can see on the quarterly chart this long term trend line that I showed that had probed below this uh, where price had broke bro below it. You can now see that long term trend line going back to sort of 2000, 2001. And in fact, I could take it right way back. If I change the uh, the feed here, you'll see that actually that long term uh, trend line goes all the way back to and um, before anyone clever clog says it, the euro didn't exist in 1985 um it's a um it's a composite of um all what was what would have been made up the cons um, constituent parts of the the euro back then so the franc the mark etc so um now i've got on this um composite chart here I've got this declining trend line, which we broke. Um, this was, when did we break that? Was that uh, end of last year? We broke this declining trend line. But you can see we're in fact in this long term channel here. OK, so you can start to see if I can squeeze it up a little bit for you. There you go. So you can start to see, OK, so this is the much bigger picture here for the euro dollar. So we broke this trend line. So do you think the uh, price is going to carry on up with you know, after breaking this trend line and the fact that we're coming off the lower trend line here of this much, much bigger trend channel, or is this the head fake and this is this the, the false break of this trend line? And in fact, prices in the early stages are starting to roll over and go for another attempt at breaking this much longer trend line here and in fact they've then the euro will start working its way back down ultimately towards 110 and, and maybe below that again your choice your uh, i'm just throwing it out there for you to if you haven't seen the charts in this way then at least you can um add some of this information to your own analysis and say all oh, right okay i wasn't aware of that larger trend channel in play there and that's quite useful so if we take this back to the the um, the direct feed on this chart on the quarterly, so then I've got my horizontal lines back on again. So you can see what's going on. We've got a right old bat, royal old battle now from the technicals. Forget the fundamentals. Everyone knows what the fun what's going on fundamentally at the moment with the uh, the central banks. So really, are we going to hold, um, or is this the beginning of a further? pullback so now you can take it back to that monthly chart and work our way back to the smaller time frames so now we can say right that 
this horizontal line that we're on at the moment, that's going to be key. Price could still probe around that horizontal line. We're sitting around it at the moment, but price can um, can still come lower, but it might just be careful that it might still um, come higher. But if you think price is coming lower, then you might be saying, well, actually, we're on for a break here. You might be looking at this, uh, the declining, sorry, the, the channel here as well, and the fact that we've just broken that on the weeklies, and you might be taking that as a sure sign to get short, and then uh, uh, for a much larger move to the downside back down towards maybe ultimately this, in the much bigger picture, this lower uh, trend line here. So if we then take it back. So that <laughs> that horizontal line is important. Now we're working our way back to the weekly charts, then back to the dailies. So there's our, our weekly again. So we we can see the, the the big move we've got. We can see it's, it's a quite a, an important candle there last week um, because it was such a significant uh, a, a candle there. And so it's very much um, above the, uh, the the typical ranges that we had been seeing. So um, this is real, real key here, and this horizontal line is going to be key. So and the and the, uh, the the trend line there as well. So your choice. Coming back now to the daily charts, we know that this is obviously quite a steep sell-off. We're having a little bit of a bounce day. Like I said, I'm recording this on Monday. I don't know where the price is going to be yet. I'm going into Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, but for some of you, you might be looking at any bounces to as shorting opportunities. And for others, you might be sitting there thinking, oh, maybe I'll wait and see if the dust settles. Now, we do have uh, Powell speaking Tuesday evening. That's UK time. I think 7 p.m. I think it is. He's testifying. That's Tuesday evening. Some traders might say, well, I'll wait for that and see what he says it does he try and backtrack on some of what he said last week um or does he um, pretty much say the similar sort of thing in which case well we should see more dollar strength on the back of that uh, maybe by you know by tomorrow night so well well worthwhile being aware of those factors but from a technical perspective you now have some nice levels to be working with you know this horizontal line is going to be key and if we start to hold below that then maybe we are going to be um, starting to come uh, much lower um, if we sort of bounce around um, and then keep coming back up again then and if we start getting closes back up above this horizontal line then it suggests that you know, it may not all be lost but certainly at the moment, the path of least resistance, the pressure is to the downside. So any bounces that we get, do expect sellers to be coming in, uh, more sellers to be coming in. So if we do get any more of, more of a bounce in the next day or two, then do, you have to expect that there will be sellers coming into this market now on bounces. So uh, until, um, because there's a bit of technical damage um, gone on uh, in the short term, and so sellers will be um, certainly in control, as we often say, and they will be looking to um, to push the market back down if we get um, a bounce. Now, I've left it on the euro dollar just because the euro dollar is the biggest currency pair. So essentially the dollar in, the dollar index inverted. So um, that's essentially where we're at. I can actually take you to the dollar index. God, it's a longer video today. And there's that's the dollar index. So it's pretty much an upside down euro dollar. Yeah. So we've just I've just shown you the dollar, in, the, the, the euro dollar, and there's the dollar index. So it's having its euros having a bounce day, dollar index is having a pullback day. But if you were looking at this chart, you might say, oh, yeah, that's a pullback at the moment, but it should then still want to go higher. And um, because, again, different traders will look at a chart differently. Some traders find it easier to look at a chart where the price has been going up. And that actually, can they can visualise where it might want to go better than where when a chart's going down, or vice versa. So different traders have a different bias. So um, that's the dollar index, and I could come all the way out to the quarterly index or quarterly chart on the dollar index as well, and then we could start. Put, I haven't put bothered putting lines on on the dollar index because I have my own. Uh, um, analysis on on that as well but um, but certainly what have we got well we can I could put a pen on and I could say well we've got these two these highs up here so we made a double top up here and we've pretty much made a double bottom down here it's not quite made the the fresh lows here but pretty much 
done that. So if I wanted to put actual lines on my chart, I would certainly be having lines up there and I'd certainly have a lines um, going crossing all the way through here. In fact, why am I saying that? Why don't I just do it? So let me just pop a horizontal line on. Right. And if I just now change the color, because there's no point in having it white because we can't see that. Uh, there we go. So let's have a look here. So, um, yeah, you can pretty much see from these highs here. I don't know if it goes back much further. No, there's nothing back from back there. So I've just popped it in across these highs. And you see that crosses through this low and it, it does cross through through the low um um, the recent low uh, as well. Uh, so the lows that we had, uh, this is for the dollar index, just um, last quarter. So it's a quarterly chart. So at the moment, we've got a support zone here and we've got a resistance zone right up here as well. So um, which way do you think the dollar is going to go? But effectively, if the dollar index is going higher, then um, expect to see that euro dollar go lower. And if the dollar index starts coming lower, then expect the euro dollar um, to go higher. Now, um, one thing to mention coming back to the euro, I'll take it back to the daily chart, is that, um, of course, what the Federal Reserve have, uh, have done last week, um, it's brought everybody, the dollar back into firm contention uh, as far as uh, interest rate lift off in a couple of years time, We're still talking about 2023, but the market's always forward pricing. So it starts to forward price in those things. One thing to consider, though, is that the US won't be the only economy that will be raising interest rates. It's just the focus of the market is all of a sudden, it's a bit like if ever you've seen Lord of the Rings and you see the um, Sauron's eye and Sauron's eye will get taken and he'll be looking out in one direction. And then you've got, is it Frodo <laughs> trying to get into the Lonely Mountain or whatever it is to destroy the ring? And he's creeping up and going into the uh, into the mountain. I don't know if it's the Lonely Mountain. Anyway, probably not. Goes into the mountain to try and destroy the ring. But Sauron's gaze is taken away. And that's what sort of thing that happens in the market. So the market will will adjust its gaze and its gaze will all be in one direction. And that at the moment is towards the US and that US economy. But its gaze will come back um, as other economies their central banks start to talk. Now, the ECB at the moment are still pretty dovish, but we've just had some really good jobs figures out of Australia. Uh, GDP figures been good out of New Zealand. Canada have already, um, um, the central bank have already hinted at, you know, their uh, tightening um, uh, coming, you know, come bringing that forward as well. So it's not just going to be the US that's going to start tightening. The UK as well, the uh, expected to, uh, lift off with interest rates in just next year in 2022. So there's a there's a there are other stories going on here as well, and that'll that'll pull the uh, the dollar around as well against other currencies. So that's, that's why I said in the main, let's just focus on the uh, the technicals here today. But um, but just wanted to go through a little bit of um, other stuff with you. So I think that this is a fascinating battleground at the moment between where's the dollar going to go over that longer run. I posted a video just, uh, I don't know, several weeks, a few weeks ago about the bigger picture, the bigger, where's the, the, the trade of the year sort of thing for the dollar. And I do think that with the volatility that we've got, that um, there's, there's scope for either, you know, a, a really big move to the downside, but that could take several months, obviously several months to work its way out. Um, for the euro to get down to 117 then does it break down to 116 and, and beyond or does it hold and does it bob around for a bit and actually then by the end of the year it's back up at 123 again so these horizontal lines are key in this in this chart absolutely key are we going to break down or are we going to hold this this level and so um only time will tell. Hopefully that's given you some interesting views. I've been babbling a bit there today, so uh, sorry about the longer video. Uh, but as always, do give us a thumbs up if you like these videos and press the bell on and the subscribe and all that stuff because it means you get notifications when our videos are released. Take care for now.